Given Gilman Barracks' central location and a lack of new housing options in the area, demand will likely be robust if it's indeed developed into a residential neighborhood, experts said. But any redevelopment must carefully consider the heritage and environmental value of the site, they added. The Singapore government announced this week that it is studying the possibility of introducing a mix of private and public housing at Gilman Barracks. A former colonial military compound turned arts and lifestyle enclave. Located off Alexandra Road, the area is now home to more than 20 restaurants, cafes and art galleries. It also includes the campus of the Academy of Singapore Teachers and a sizable forest that separates it from public housing estates in Talok Blanga. Environmental and heritage studies will start in the second quarter of 2024 and are estimated to be completed around the first half of 2026. National Development Minister Desmond Lee said on Tuesday, March 5th, Findings from these studies will allow authorities to plan sensitively for the site's development, he told Parliament. Property experts say any new public housing to be built at the Gilman Barracks site would likely fall under the prime or plus categories. These form part of a new classification scheme for built-to-order BTO projects, which kicks in from the second half of this year. Prime and plus category flats are typically new ones in central or choice locations. They come with stricter sale conditions. But experts do not expect that to deter potential home buyers. Apart from being located near the city centre, Gilman Barracks is also in close proximity to a business park in Peza Panjang and the future Greater Southern Waterfront District. At the nearby Labrador MRT station, to the mix and you have a highly desirable area to live, work and play, said Hutton's Asia's Senior Director of Data Analytics, Lee Z Tech. There have also been limited new housing options, both public and private, in the area. As of last month, only about 4,400 new flats have been launched for sale in Bukit Merai since 2016, relatively low supply compared to many other districts. Said Orange D Group's chief researcher and strategist Christine Sunday likewise, there are only a handful of private residential projects near Gilman Barracks, with the newest being the interlace in Alexandra Road, which was completed in 2013. Even if redeveloped, the area's history should be conserved in some form, experts said. The Gilman Barracks site is undoubtedly a layered heritage site, said Dr. Nikhil Joshi, senior lecturer in the National University of Singapore's NUS Architecture Department. The recognition and assessment of its various heritage values should be based on international conservation standards with due consideration of the local situation. Dr. Joshi recommended that a Heritage Impact Assessment HIA be done for the site to ascertain its tangible and intangible significance as well as the impact of any new development, and to suggest mitigation measures. Introduced in March 2022, the HIA framework is the most extensive type of study done for public projects that are likely to cause major impact to significant heritage sites. Such an assessment was first done for the redevelopment of the Old Police Academy site in the Mount Pleasant area, followed by Bukit Timer Turf Club, both of which Dr. Joshi was involved in. The HIA will help ensure the historic Gilman Barracks site will remain meaningful for current and future generations, said Dr. Joshi. Hutton's Asia's Mr. Lee said the development model of the Old Police Academy site where six police buildings will be conserved and integrated with future BTO projects, could offer some inspiration to plans for Gilman Barracks. He reckoned that the most probable site up for development would be the land where the Academy of Singapore teaches, also the former St. Andrews Junior College and some commercial buildings currently stand. Meanwhile, some colonial-style buildings in the vicinity could be retained. That said, 
conservation goes beyond preserving specific buildings or structures. A holistic view would be to consider the collection of buildings and other open spaces as focal points and have future developments planned and integrated around them, said Professor Sing Tin Fu, Provost Chair Professor of Real Estate at the NUS Business School. In addition, adaptive reuse of old buildings is key to adding value while keeping the area's colonial charm, he added. The Gilman Barracks also houses a sizable forest area between Alexandra Road and Lock Road. Spanning about 10 hectares, the greenery on its own is large enough to support a functioning ecosystem with a good diversity of trees and small animals, said Dr. Sean Lam, senior lecturer at the Nanyang Technological University's Asian School of the Environment. It also has potential as a safe haven for migratory forest birds. If given enough time, the forested area can develop into an even richer, more complex and ecologically valuable habitat than it is today, said Dr. Lam. But the site's location is also strategically important and valuable. This is because the Gilman Barracks provides a connection between the southern ridges to its north and Balea Creek and Labrador Nature Reserve to its south, Dr. Lam explained. From the southern ridges, it's possible for wildlife to move, via the rail corridor, into Bukit Taima in the central and western catchment areas. Meanwhile from Labrador Nature Reserve, there is a link eastward to the future Greater Southern Waterfront and west to the West Coast Park Corridor. The Greater Southern Waterfront itself has the potential to create a contiguous corridor along the entire southern coastline from Jurong toward Changi. Remove the forested area of Gilman entirely and the ability of wildlife to move from north to south across the island, and then east and west along the southern shores, could be curtailed considerably. Dr. Lam concluded. Authorities have said that tenancies in the Gilman Barracks area will progressively expire by 2030, and existing tenants can continue to stay on till their leases end. Two new tenants were announced as recently as last April by the Singapore Land Authority. One of them, DD Lifestyle, held its official opening on Friday, March 8 morning. The motorcycle distributor was awarded 17. 000 SQ Fort of Space across three units at BLK 47 along Mellon Road in a standalone building at BLK 43. The units at BLK 47 have been turned into a showroom since last November. The space at BLK 43 offers dining options in an event space for weekend markets featuring local independent craft makers, birthday parties and yoga sessions. Didi's co-head of lifestyle operations Yuan Wang told CNA the announcement of a possible housing development brought mixed reactions. But he added that SLA has assured his company that development plans are still at study stage and its tenancy will remain intact minimally until 2030. Any business would appreciate some longevity, said Mr. Wong. But the current lease should have enough runway for us to build up our own community. As to what comes after that and if it involves uprooting, that will be an issue to be discussed when it happens. Likewise, Mr. Roger Yip, director of Hopscotch, said reassurance from the authorities on their leases has soothed the biggest concern for business owners like him. The bar, which has been at Gilman Barracks since 2018, has developed a certain bond with the area, he said. Hopscotch's current tenancy expires in 2030. If given a choice, we will want to continue here, but for FB businesses in general, it is very hard to project five to eight years down the road, said Mr. Yip, noting that leases in malls or shop houses typically range from two to three years. Shorter leases are very pressuring because you have to think about whether you can break even within that few years. So, 
Being able to secure a lease for five years or more is already quite a big plus for us. We will just see how it goes. Miss Audrey Yeo, owner of the Yeo Workshop, said art galleries like hers have been integral to building up Gilman Baroque's identity by organizing exhibitions and events over the years. We hope the authorities would engage in discussions, ensuring our collective aspirations are considered for a culturally rich Singapore, Miss Sio, who is also representing the art galleries in the area, told CNA. Other tenants declined to comment when approached, with most saying that it was too early to assess the situation given scant detail on when and whether any redevelopment will go through. If redevelopment does happen, there are people who will miss the greenery, tranquility and out-of-Singapore vibes unique to the Gilman barracks. Some of the trees here will have to be given up. Which is quite a pity, said Mr. Benjamin Tan, who jogs in the area every week. Miss Pristine Chan began frequenting Gilman Barracks about a year ago and the Lock Road outlet of Crimea. A homegrown ice cream chain is a go-to place for her and her friends. But staff there told CNA it would have its last day on March 17. Miss Chan, 22, was set to hear this. She also finds the quiet Gilman Barracks area conducive to study. Take walks with her pet dog or just seek respite from the city's hustle and bustle. If this place no longer looks like this, maybe I won't come here anymore, she said.